YouTube, astrophotography is a complicated hobby. There is a lot going on. It's easy to get lost when you're just starting out. Um, it's easy to get overwhelmed with how much is going on. But I wanted to create a quick checklist that might help uh, the beginning astrophotographer. As you develop in this hobby, you will, uh, you know, all the stuff will become second nature and uh, you'll be able to set up relatively quickly. But uh, right now, let's go over a, a few things. And the first thing I want to talk about is location. Um, and there are three main things to consider about your location, and that is your line of sight. You want to know where your target's going to be, where it's going to be on your horizon, you know, how long it's going to be, where it's going to be in the middle of the night. Um, because if you've got a lot of trees like I do, um, your targets can spend a lot of time behind trees, so you want to maximize your, uh, your time on target. So just kind of open up your, uh, are you okay, sweetheart? Open your Stellarium app or, uh, you know, Sky Safari or whatever you happen to use and uh, see where your, <laughs> where your thing's going to be popping up and uh, make sure you're not going to be behind any trees when it comes out. And uh, the next thing to consider about location is the stability of the area you're setting up on. You don't want to set up on things like decks, uh, pati patios, sidewalks, things like that. Please don't hit the cam. I mean, your sidewalk may seem stable, but if it's only like two inch thick concrete, that's going to transmit a lot of vibration into your mount. If um, so, and decks, you know, are horrible. They will transmit all kinds of vibration into your mount. You want to set up on the ground. And the second part of that is to set up on grass covered ground because if you, you know, you might have a stable concrete patio, but that's been baking in the sun all day and it's soaked up a lot of heat. And when the sun goes down, that's going to radiate that heat all up in front of your telescope and give you thermals. And you don't want that. So grass covered, well packed ground is the best place to put your tripod. And uh, so you'll set it up pointing as close to due north as possible. That'll help with your alignment. And after you've got your location picked out, you want to start with your assembly. Make sure everything's tight. I've got some screws that like to come loose on these things and that'll, that'll cause a lot of gremlins later on with the guiding. Um, so make sure everything's tight. Make sure all your cables are clear of all your pinch points. You know, as this, as this is moving through the night, you're gonna, you might, you might pinch some things. Okay, if you need to go pee, then you gotta be mindful of where this is gonna be slewing. If you've got a cable hanging down here, that might get chopped, you know, as you're slewing throughout the night. So, gotta make sure your cables are out of the way, and you don't want a bunch hanging down. You don't want weight shifting throughout the night. So, you know, keep it tight. So cable management is important. Um, and after you've got everything, all your cables up, you'll want to consider your camera position because there is an up and a down in outer space, believe it or not. Um, you know, the, the North Celestial Pole is up, the South Celestial Pole is down. I don't know how they do it down south, on the, on the south end of the equator. I don't know if they use the south as up I don't think they would, I don't know. I've, I've, I've never shot any targets in the south, so I wouldn't know. But anyways, up here on the, in the, nor the northern hemisphere, um, you want the top of your camera's frame pointing toward the North Pole. And of course there's, you know, there's artistic liberty here. If you want to do a portrait or landscape orientation, um, you, you know, you're free, to, you're free to frame up your target however you want to. But there is an up and a down, and that's you know north and south. So when you're can if you're over on the uh, the east side of the meridian, you want the top of your camera pointing toward the left hand side of your scope, and that will uh, that will put north up in your frame. So that's something to be mindful of when you're setting up your camera orientation. And a lot of times you got to do that in real time. Just have your live view and you'll kind of tweak your camera to, uh, to get it where you want it. You know, after you, after you 
get more comfortable, you've got things rolling, it, it'll become helpful to put marks on your camera with a little with a little marker so you get it right where you want it. Um, you know, you really want to start putting some money on there. You can get a an automatic camera rotator that will orient your camera automatically. I'm not going to worry about stuff like that. Uh, but you get your camera orientation. You want to check your balance if you're setting up from scratch. I keep things pretty much the same. So, and I've got marks on here for the positions of everything. So I don't worry about balance too much. But it's tempting when you're starting out to just want to nail your balance. You know, one side exactly the same as the other side. But that's not the case. You want to. You want your mount to always be letting your scope down. So if you're at the west, if you're, I'm sorry, if you're over in the east, you want it slightly scope heavy. So just slightly, just enough to keep your backlash seated so that it's easier on the motors to let your scope down. If you're over on the west side of the meridian, you want it slightly counterweight heavy so that it's letting it down. Um, that'll keep your backlash seated if you know if you don't have a ten thousand dollar mount um you probably were have some backlash in there and uh same thing with your declination keep it slightly tail heavy that that'll keep your declination seated and you want it tail heavy so that your center of gravity is lower you don't want it front heavy because then you've got more weight up here that's you know just more forces in play so you want the declination slightly tail heavy that'll keep your declination backlash seated and slightly west heavy on your right ascension and that's that's how you want to balance it just slightly when when you've got it like this and you let it go it should this I'm too heavy here when you've got it like this and you let it go it should just just start to move down just just like that. You want it to just slightly start going down like that. You don't want it to just drop like a rock. You just want it slightly off balance and that'll keep your declination seated. I'm sorry, that'll keep your backlash seated. And, and then you, you start what I call the, uh, the, uh, the I call it a pre-trip because I'm a truck driver, but it's all the stuff you do before you start imaging. You, you're, you've got your scope set up. Now what you're gonna do is, uh, the first thing you're going to do is uh, check your collimation if you've got a reflector. Get on a bright star, you uh, defocus it slightly. You want to defocus on both sides of that star and see which side is better and use the better side because of the, the heat differential inside and outside. One side will be better than the other side. Use the side that's better. Defocus it a little bit and look at that donut. You know, collimation is a whole other video. You can find videos on that. So you'll collimate, then I focus. After that, I lock in my focus, and then I polar align. And all of the collimation, focus, and polar alignment, everything in here deserves a video on its own, but this is just the order that I do things in. Most people would do their star alignment at this point, you know, sync the scope up with stars in the night sky. I don't do that. I just, I just slew it to where it thinks my target is. And that's usually, you know, within a couple of degrees. And then um, I just do a plate solve, you know, take a 30 second image, do a plate solve, and then sync the scope, and then it, it nails it dead center the next time I try to slew to it. So that's all I ever do, I never star align. Um, so yeah, you want to, you want the scope to know where it's pointing at, that's the next step. And then you decide, decide on your exposure length, that's a whole series of videos. Um, you know, you got to take into account your equipment, your camera, your your uh, focal length, your focal ratio, your guiding capabilities, your uh, you know light pollution, the moon phase, whether or not you're broadband or narrowband. I mean, there's just everything. A ton of stuff goes into deciding what kind of exposure you're going to be taking. The the brightness of your target. You know, whether or not you're going for star color and taking a short exposure, whether or not you're trying to pick up very faint gases and taking a 15 minute exposure, you know, a lot goes into choosing your exposure length and that's going to take a lot of research and practice on your part. I usually shoot around, you know, between three and seven minute exposures. 
So you decide your exposure length and then you just start piling on the exposure to get as much as you can on every, every session. And uh, you need to work in your flats during that session. Flats need to be taken uh, during every session that you're going to apply those flats to because of changes in orientation, changes in focus, changes in dust motes. Flats always need to be taken every time. Um, either take them at the beginning, middle, or end of the session. It doesn't really matter. It just has to be in the same configuration and time frame as you take your, uh, your lights in. Um, and then, you know, you do your bias, darks, flat darks, you know, whatever, whatever you're doing, work in your calibration frames, then you process it, show it to your friends, and uh, hopefully get, a, get something nice to look at. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's my workflow for the night. That's how I set up. That's how I get going. And I can, it usually takes me like 30 minutes tops, tops. I mean, if, if I've got, you know, if I've got the tripod and mount kind of sitting out on the porch already, I chuck that out there, throw the scope on it, plug everything in, you know, I can be up and running in 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, I know it's overwhelming, but once you get, once you get into your habit, and you don't have to do it exactly like I do, but it's, it's, it's not a bad way to do it, I don't think. Anyways, uh, we're going to have clear skies tonight. I just got this little camera from ZWO, the, the 224 uh, color camera. I'm going to try to do some planetary tonight. Jupiter and Saturn are starting to get up in the air. I'm going to try to do those and try to get some of the moon. Uh, I've never done any planetary, so uh, I'll let you know how that goes. Anyways, clear skies. Good luck out there. And uh, don't give up, even if you get frustrated. Um, you know, it's, it's really easy to get frustrated. I've had nights where I was just banging my head against anything I could find because of, you know, bad guiding, wind gusts, you know, whatever. There, there's all kinds of things that can frustrate you about this hobby. But, you know, it's the journey, not the destination. And, uh... Pictures are nice. The, the universe is beautiful. I love revealing the wonders of deep space to my friends and family. But uh, at, at, the, at the end of the day, it's, it's the journey. So just have fun with it. Don't get frustrated. And uh, leave any questions you have in the comments. Clear skies. All right, we just finished gathering um, the data and processing it. And I think it came out pretty well. Um, this was like a two-minute video on Jupiter. I think it was going like 50 frames per second this was this is the best 15 percent all i did was stick the raw ser files into auto stacker and stack them and then stretch or and then sharpen it in pixin sight and it came out pretty good so i did jupiter and saturn and infrared and they came out all right and uh, i did mars and visual and mars is slightly shadowed here but yeah i'm happy with this it came out hey what, what are you okay stop it but yeah i'm showing link the pictures we took last night uh but yeah really happy you can see io in the frame oh <laughs> thanks you can see io in the frame here but yeah signing off have my son is going crazy do you have fleas okay but signing off clear skies